It's Sean Lamb here for Streaming Media Producer at NEB 2023, and I'm here with Mark from Sony, and we're here to talk about the ZV-E1. It's a V-logging camera that Sony has brought out now. It's a beautiful camera in that it's a small form factor, takes the very familiar E-mount or alpha line lenses. Um, who is this camera designed for, and how does it fit into the, the full Sony lineup of your alpha cameras? Well, it's actually designed for a wide range of content creators. Uh, Vlogging, of course, is um, one of its highlights in terms of capabilities, but it's designed to put very high-end video capture performance into the hands of any content creator who needs a very, very compact size, go anywhere. And it's equipped with our latest technology to aid solo shooters who are often both the talent and the camera operator at the same time because it has our AI subject recognition and it uses it for some very powerful features. How does that work? Well, essentially the camera has the AI subject recognition that we introduced last fall in our Alpha 7R Mark V. It can identify uh, humans and the human form much more successfully than a camera that's just tracking face and eye. And in this camera, we use that such that if you are a self-shooter, if you're, say, holding the camera up here and shooting yourself narrating a sequence with uh, subjects or scenery in the background that you're explaining to your audience. This camera can identify you in the frame and it can pan and zoom into that to allow you to be very, very prominent during the video that you're rolling and it can stream that in real time. That's only one of its unique features. On top of that, it's also a full frame imager that's optimized for 4K video capture. Uh, it can shoot 422 10-bit, it can shoot in log, it can shoot in S-Cinetone, and it can shoot in a variety of not only formats, but also frame rates. So it's highly versatile. It is indeed the smallest full-frame camera with interchangeable lenses and sensor shift image stabilization in the market today. So it's a really powerful combination, but it's designed not just to be smaller and lighter, it's designed to very powerfully enable uh, content creators who have to manage the camera and be the talent as they're creating the videos that they're shooting. And that happens all too often on YouTube, which is, which is a great thing, right? It's, it's driving that whole industry of content producers. Um, just some clarifications here, so 4K, is it 30 or 60 is the, the highest frame rate? Oh, the camera can shoot 4K, 24P, 30P, 60P, 120P. 120P, okay. It can shoot uh, in both long op and all intra. It can shoot H.264 or H.265. It can shoot in 4208-bit or 4210-bit. Um, you have um, HDMI output for external recording. It's fully equipped for all of the high-end video production that you might need. But what makes the camera different is, of course, the full-frame image sensor, the fact that it's optimized for video. It doesn't have you know, 50 or 60 megapixels. It's designed for 4K with uh, 10 megapixels for video. So it has extraordinarily high low light capability and wide dynamic range. Uh, it can handle custom LUTs, can be imported into the camera. So it's a, a great all-around performer for a variety of video tasks. What really highlights its capability is its ability to use AI to actually perform subject framing. Let's talk about that for a second. So it's when we're using in the AI mode where it's, it's auto-framing, auto-zooming in, it's cropping on the sensor to, to get a punch in off that wide image. The resulting recording, is it a single recording or is it a dual? Like, is that wide recorded as well as the AI or is it just the result? You can record both streams. You can uh, record the punched in and uh, uh, framed scene or you can record uh, the full scene that the camera is seeing without that. Uh, and you can even record them at the same time. It's just that you can't re record both streams at the same time in the camera. In the camera, you can record the full scene, you can um, record the punched in and uh, tracking scene, uh, or you get your choice, and then output through the HDMI, you can also get your choice of which you'd like to have. 
But the real power is to allow this processing to happen in real time in the camera and the ability to stream that to an audience in real time so as you don't have to go through a process of post where you could say pan and zoom and use keyframes to create such a video. Now, I know it's not a huge feature, you know, professionals when they produce content you know, with producers and talent that's in front of the camera, not, not on, on their own, they have different strategies for audio management. But when a vlogger, someone's producing content on their own, how does this camera help with the audio? What, what tricks does it have up its sleeves? Yeah. And that's a, a, a great point and another area where the camera shines. Uh, for an internal microphone, this one has a three capsule mic in the top. And this can be user adjusted for three different directivities. You can set it so it's front directivity for someone that you're interviewing. You can set it to rear directivity in case you are shooting something that you're narrating. You can set it to omnidirectional directivity. But even more than the manual selection of directivity, the camera can also use AI to understand the content that's in the scene. If a, uh, a human comes into the scene, it can automatically and intelligently change the directivity of the microphone to front directivity. When a person leaves the scene and there are no you know, recognized faces or people in the scene, it will automatically shift back to omnidirectional directivity on its own. So the ability for the AI to control that through understanding the content of the scene that's in front of the camera is another one of its powerful um, uh, benefits. And so we talked about the HDMI output and that's a, is it a mini or a micro or a full size? Well, in a lot of our cameras, of course, we're using full size HDMI, but in this camera, due to its incredibly compact size, uh, this one is actually using a micro HDMI. We'd like to put full in, but uh, there's a limit to the space. But again, the incredible part of this camera is that in a body that is literally fits in the palm of your hand, there is not only a full frame image sensor, but there is also a sensor shift stabilizer built into this incredibly small and incredibly light body. So the sensor shift stabilization, that goes beyond a standard not even standard, but an amazing five-axis stabilization system, right? Yeah, we use the same type of device that we use in many of our cameras in Alpha. It's a five-axis, um, five steps of compensation. But in this camera, we also can allow the mechanism to have a greater range of compensation by engaging a slight crop of the sensor. Um, it's quite minimal, but it, it, you can barely notice it, but it allows the sensor, the sensor shift mechanism to provide a greater degree of compensation. And then for the first time in this camera, we also have uh, created what we call dynamic active mode in which we can crop in a little bit further, and this is all user uh, selectable, um, and combine electronic image stabilization together with the optical image stabilization of the sensor shift mechanism. And that allows the kind of stability that you would previously only be able to get from a gimbal. And we developed this technology because many of the users' uh, feedback was that yes, they can use a gimbal if they want, but if they were able to get that kind of stability without having to go to the trouble of setting up and balancing a gimbal, that would be a big advantage. And one of the things that we're finding is a lot of this content, a lot, a lot of these users need to have the camera in motion, not just the subject in motion. So the ability to walk or even trot with the camera while rolling and still getting stable footage uh, is again, another achievement with this product. But again, it's designed around the requirements of the users. And this is a rapidly growing and rather different group of users and the requirements that they have of their uh, cameras. This has been a look at the Sony ZV-E1 at NAB 2023. I'm Sean Lamb for Streaming Media Producer.